praying for and um, and so tonight we're going to be talking about in the wait. Um, and I believe, just as we get going, that one of the, you know, one of the toughest seasons that we go through as children of God is that period when you have to wait, um, you know, uh, when it's like you're, you're, you're pending, you're waiting on God's answer, you're waiting on God's uh, direction, or you're even waiting on his promise. Eh? You're just in that space where um, you're like, I don't know if God says move or not. Um, and so you've prayed and you are certain that, uh, you know, God is coming through and God is answering and you're like, okay, so what's the answers? Because you've not heard anything yet. And maybe it's a promise that God gave you. You know, we are almost at the end of the year. And maybe you're like, man, this was supposed to be the year that I get married or something. And, you know, mbaka sai akuna mshikaji amekuja. Uh, maybe you've been waiting on a job and, you know, it's, uh, the, you had the promise, you had the prophecy. Have you ever been prophesied to? And you're like, man, when was that prophecy supposed to happen? Because you've been waiting and trusting God and um, you've been alert and you're wondering, or did I hear wrong, you know? Um, and I believe that's one of the toughest seasons you can find yourself in, you know? Uh, when you're in that space where, um, you know, uh, Maybe you've been asking God, should I do this or that? Maybe it could be in your family, in your business. And you're wondering, man, I've not yet had the answer. And you know, this is one of the toughest spaces that we can actually find ourselves in. Um, and um, dare I say that it's actually one of the seasons that can be a make or break uh, in many people's lives. Because if you move amiss, you mess up. And you know, in the economy of God, he operates with times and seasons. Eh? So you may end up waiting a full season, a full cycle, before that season comes back again. And so it's a very delicate kind of space uh, to find yourself in. And you know, they say, and rightly so, that good things come to those who wait. So I say one and I find it especially true even in scripture, uh, that the people that waited on God, um, it's like when God finally shows up or comes through in our own eyes, he has a way of wiping away every tear that you shed when you're waiting. And you're like, man, thank God the wait was worth it. I was watching a video, I think must have been yesterday night, um, if I'm not wrong. And there was a guy who was, uh, you know, talking to... I don't know, it's like a podcast, eh? and he was talking to his uh, his wife, um, and I was like, hey, is your line and he was saying that, um, he, I, thank God I waited um, for someone like you. Uh, you are an answer. I was like, yo, I should try that on faith and see what she says. Yeah? I, thank God I waited, um, and I finally found you. Um, and the lady was so jazzed, and I was like, yo, you know, it's, it's actually true that um, uh, as we wait on God, the promise or the reality is it is always worth the wait, uh, especially when it comes to God. Um, and, you know, as human beings, um, once a promise is given, we usually want it to happen and happen now. I uh, usually think about King David. When he was anointed, they say he was around 15 years old. And by the time he was becoming king, he was about 30. Um, and after being anointed as king, and Samuel was a big deal. Eh? When Samuel used to come to your village or to your house, uh, you would actually, um, you know, prepare for the prophet. Because you don't know what God is saying. And so they used to prepare. And it must have been a very big deal. And people are like, Samuel, I mean, uh, Samuel is coming to Jesse's house. Um, uh, you know, this must be a big deal. Um, and you know the, how the story goes, and Bible says that David was anointed with the horn of oil, and it was like, now you're going to be the king of Israel. And amazingly, um, David was ready to wait for the word to come through. And you know, I would only surmise that he went back to tending to his father's sheep. Um, he didn't now go to the palace and tell Saul, man, you need to vacate. Imagine a 15-year-old 15, 15 going to the palace and going like, you know, I've been anointed king and everyone knows it, so you need to vacate. No, he was patient and he knew that, um, you know, the promise, as long as God has said it, it will come to pass. And so the trick is waiting on God's timing. And I think this is where most of us have a challenge. You know, you already know what God wants of you, um, but now waiting for 
you know, the right and uh, the, the God's time is where the challenge comes uh, in because you usually just want it and want it now. You know, um, um, every time God has spoken to me about something, I usually start behaving as if it has happened. All right? There are times I pray and God tells me financial breakthrough is en route. And I start shopping. Because God said, you know, it's... And then by the time that financial breakthrough comes through, um, I am in debt. You get? Because we usually just want things happening quickly. Um, I have had, uh, you know, moments, and I know I'm not alone, that I've moved too soon. And I'm like, man, I wish I just waited for one more year. I wish I just waited for a little more uh, time. And you know, the, the trick in Akwanga knowing when to move. Um, and many times, Musa Manga, if God tells you something, also ask him about his time. You know, um, don't move too soon. And on the other hand, Pia, uh, don't delay. Right? So I think wisdom is asking God for uh, discernment. All right? Um, but. That said, today I'll just focus on the waiting bit because that is where the challenge for many of us usually is. And so Psalm chapter 27 verse 13 and 14 says, Yet I am confident, yet I am confident I will see the Lord's goodness while I am here in the land of the living. Wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the the Lord. The message is clear. Wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. It almost implies that for you to wait patiently, it takes some level of being brave and courageous. And then it says, yes, wait patiently for the Lord. And it begins by saying, yet I am confident I will see the Lord's goodness while I am here in the land of of the living. It is always worth it waiting on God. It is all I mean, God has a you know an interesting way of wiping away our tears. You know, the tears that you've been waiting on and going like God would you come through as long as he said it, he will do it however long it takes. And so I love the fact that there's an assurance that we shall see his goodness in the land of the living. But the thing is this, wait patiently for the Lord. And so for tonight, let me begin um, by telling us some of the benefits we get to enjoy by waiting on God. You know, even in the waiting, there is benefit. Not only in the answer, when the answer to the prayer finally comes through, but even in the waiting, there is benefit. Amazing. That even as I'm waiting, you know, I've, I've once taken a car to a certain garage. I, I love that garage. Um, and I remember when I went there, um, you were ushered into a car waiting bay. It was a serious garage. Um, and you are ushered into a certain waiting area. And in the waiting area, you are served with whatever you want, whether you're hungry, you're given food, whether you're, you know, you, there's coffee right there, uh, there's food right there, there's Wi-Fi, and you're just taken, and you're like, I don't mind waiting. And you know, you can be kept there for like two, three hours, and you don't even notice it, because you're busy, uh, you know, on TikTok, and you know, there's drinks in supply, I mean, there's benefits in waiting on God. Even in the waiting room, there are benefits that we get to enjoy. And this is what I want us to share tonight very quickly and see if we can touch on something else. And so number one, one of the benefits you get to enjoy when we wait on God is that our strength is renewed. Our strength is renewed. As you wait on God, you get to learn how to trust him. You get to learn how to depend on him. And so one of the things that uh, the Bible says we get to enjoy, even in the waiting bay, even in the waiting area, is that our strength is, uh, you know, uh, renewed. You know, the Bible says uh, trust in, I think it's Proverbs 3, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, right? Um, and so as you're waiting, you're actually telling God, I can't do it on my own. I need you. I can't lean on my understanding. I'm waiting on you. And imagine as you do this, as the Bible says, um, you know, your, your, his strength is made perfect even in your 
weakness. And so as you wait on God and as you're quiet in that space of saying, God, I'll not move until you tell me to move, then your strength is renewed. I like how the kings in olden day Israel used to operate. Before they attacked any city, before they went to war, they usually went and asked the prophet, should we attack? And the moment the prophet said, yes, you can go, the Lord is with you, they were guaranteed of victory. Even as you wait on God and as you trust in him and as you listen for his voice, the moment he speaks, you will win because you have been strengthened in that place, you know, of waiting. Isaiah 40, 31 says, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I think I need to take that again. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. There is strength in that space of waiting on God. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. This implies that you shall rise above all else. An eagle is one of the birds that flies highest, you know. Um, and it's a very, actually a very strong bird. And they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. In fact, in the uh, preceding verses, it says that even young people grow weary. But they that wait on the Lord. There is strength in that space of waiting. You're not just waiting and nothing is happening. You're actually being built up. James 1.1 1, 1 tells us that count it all joy when troubles come. Because when these things come, and even when you're waiting and things are pressing you on every side, it's just going to build your character. It's not all lost. You're not wasting time in that space of waiting on God. Your strength is actually being built up. And there is nothing more amazing than telling God, I can't rely on my own strength. I actually need your strength. I can't rely on my own wisdom. Doesn't the Bible say that the wisdom of man is like foolishness to God? Right? And so as you're waiting, you're telling God, yo, I can't figure this thing out on my own. I don't want a good idea. I want a God idea. I want your leading. And so you're, you're actually building up your strength. Why? Because by the time you're walking out, by the time David was coming to face Goliath, he had known that, you know what, in the waiting space, I could deal with lions. I could deal with bears. Who is Goliath? This realization only comes from that space of waiting. If he was in a hurry, and he would have gotten in a lot of trouble. Why? He had not yet been built up. And so as you're in that space of waiting and trusting in God, remember this, that your strength is as well being built up. I remember one time a certain preacher went on a radio show. And this certain preacher is our lead pastor. He went on a radio show many years ago. It was the first time that he had gone to Hope FM. And I remember, you know, when it's your first time, it's the first time your pastor is going on a you know, radio station like Hope FM. And by the I don't know about nowadays. I, I, I don't remember the last time I listened to radio. But back then, Hope FM was the thing, you know. Um, and, you know, the whole church, you are congregating, trying to listen to our pastor on Hope FM. And we were waiting, and we were the ones to say, Mamutu was putuma maswali, situ tatuma maswali. You know, you know, supporting your man of God. And by the time he was going, uh, the questions that he was being asked, it was a question and answer kind of a session. Eh? And the questions he was being asked, he answered them with ease, with clarity. Mbaka si unyo tunasema, usho na your pastor haja choma, mbaka mnasema, that's my pastor. You know, sometimes aneza choma, useme, hey. You know, and we are so proud, we are so happy. And I remember the radio presenter asking him, where have you been? This nation needs your voice. Where have you been? And guess what? Pastor said, I was around. Maybe I was in the waiting area. I was being built up. By the time the guy is being unleashed, you know, you think, where have, dude, his strength has been built up in that space of waiting. And you know, he didn't have to force his way uh, you know, force issues and make sure that he gets on the limelight. No, 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 no. As you're waiting on God, in his time, people will start asking you, where have you been? We've needed this idea for a while. What have you been doing? You know, how old are you? Man, where have you been hiding? There's strength in that space of waiting. Number two, even as you're 
Strength is being built up. Remember this, that as you're in that waiting space, you're not wasting time. Actually, I, I put it this way, that you actually save time by being in the waiting room of God. You don't waste time by waiting on God. You actually save yourself some good amount of time. Let me put it this way. God knows the end from the beginning. He sees the bigger picture. And as such, you can trust him to know the exact right time to unleash you. The exact right time to answer that promise. Why? When you're there, you're not wasting time. You hear me? Um, now, it's interesting that uh, one of the stories that just came to mind is Moses. And the guy, of course, as you know, his story is being, he's been raised up in Pharaoh's house by default. And he goes out and sees, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, an Egyptian beating, uh, you know, an Israelite, and he retaliates and kills the, the guy. And, you know, Moses in itself, the name itself means deliverer, you know. And he actually knew his assignment, if you ask me. He knew a man, I'm going to deliver my people, you know. You know, the burdens that God puts in your heart, they're not in vain. Labdo um, Kipitamali, something bothers you. It's like God is, you know, uh, pointing you to something that he wants you to deal with, you know. Um, I usually believe the broken are masters at mending. There are some things we go through. And God is just shaping you for your destiny, shaping you for what you need to be uh, to be dealing with. Huh? Um, and so Moses is offended when you know someone is beating on uh, the Israelite, and he goes retaliates and kills the guy. And Bible says he buries him under the sand. I, I don't know who buries anyone under the sand, but anyway, he buries him under the sand. And as you know the story, uh, and he's like, yo, why are you all fit? And he realizes my secret is out. And he runs away um, to his, you know, father-in-law. And they say that he actually spent about 40 years um, in the desert, tending to, you know, his father-in-law's sheep um, uh, before the burning bush story. And I keep wondering, were the 40 years necessary? And you realize when you look at the life of Moses, they were really necessary because the guy was very rash in decision making. Alikuwa na temper. You get. Um, and it landed him in problems. And even after 40 years, some glimpses of that temper used to come out when he was leading the people of Israel. Right? Um, and it's an amazing story of how Man, I wish you just wait for God himself to introduce you to your assignment instead of you introducing yourself. I believe God is better at his introducing you. Man, imagine one of the best people. You know, the, uh, back when I was growing up, there was a wrestling announcer. I forget his name, but this guy, when he introduces a wrestler, even if the guy looks like a toothpick, you'd go like, that's a good wrestler. Hey, are you ready? And man, you see someone walking in and it builds anticipation. I mean, God can introduce you at his time, and at that time you'll realize, man, Kumba, I didn't waste my time. But if you decide to take matters into your own hands, you may actually end up doing more time than you really ought to uh, in the beginning. You may actually end up spending more time that you, than you really needed to. And so as you wait on God, remember this, you are not wasting time. You actually are not. Allow him to be the one to introduce you to the spotlight. Number three, number one, as you're waiting on God, he renews your strength. You're not wasting time. In, in fact, I dare say that you are actually uh, saving time, saving yourself time. But number three, as you're waiting on God, you shall enjoy the fullness of the promise when it eventually comes. You shall enjoy the fullness of his promise. We have at this point in time a serious problem with our young generation. A serious problem. Um, there's a story I was reading that really grieved my heart of two college university, two university students, two boys. And it is said that these two boys uh, were the most flashy people in the university. Walikuwa university na Ferrari. Imagine in Kenya. A university student and a very big car flashy lifestyle, pouring money left, right, and center, you know. Um, these guys used to wash their hands with expensive wine, literally, you know. Um, and it's a problem that we have everywhere. But 
the source of their wealth, uh, we all know, uh, was, was through dubious means. And when I was reading the story, the two of them, their bodies had been found and they had been tortured to death. And this is the story that is repeating itself in our generation over and over. You hear of young girls being killed? And unaskia story likwanini yo. Um, I, she just wanted to get some money. Someone connected her to a certain West African guy. Uh, they went for a party in Kilimani. Okay, you're looking at me as if I'm talking fiction. It's tunazijua. <laughs> You know, they went for a certain party in Kilimani, and one thing transpired, and the other, the next day, a body is found in a paper bag. Why? And you keep yourself, why? It's because we really want the promise now without waiting. We don't want the process. Right? Uh, I want to drive the good car and live in the good house, but I don't want the period of being built up and waiting on God. I want it now. Right? Um, and it, it's, a, it's a serious problem that we are encountering right now. Um, I wish we would know, as uh, Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22 says, The blessing of the Lord makes rich and adds no. Do you know how this blessing comes about? When you wait on him. When you refuse to take shortcuts. When you say, listen, if I didn't earn it, I won't take it. I'll wait on God. He will bless what I have. Even the little that I have, he will bless it. I'll not take anyone's money. You know, it's a beautiful thing when you sit around your dining table with your children and you know, hakuna mtu wa ndo wako wakule. I waited on the promise. I waited on, uh, you know, uh, his answer. I trusted the process to get me to where I am. One of us here in church came to the youth uh, meeting, youth hangout that we usually have every month. And he came and he was telling us his story of how he rose through the ranks. He's, uh, he's doing pretty well. And he was telling us the story of how he rose through the ranks. And one of the things I noticed is he started with selling, he told us, with selling bananas, if I'm not wrong, um, hawking bananas um, in town, you know. And that's where his journey started off. He knew God will prosper me. God will make a way for me. I will be, Bible says, mighty in the land. Those are promises that God promises us. But... He went through the process. He was not afraid to wait on God to come through. One of the things I like most is understanding that even in the, you know, in the salary you get, God can prosper you through that. You don't need to cut corners and look for deals. God can actually prosper you through that. God asks most, what do you have in your hands? So stop looking for what is, uh, you know, out there. What do you have? in your hands. Man, I went to get myself, uh, you know, there's a time there was an issue, uh, the, you know, maybe in Tabebona Subaru boys, like in Ochani Cemetery. There's a time I went to look for a passport. I've never been that frustrated in my life. Every office you go, so unasemaji mdosi. So unasemaji. Every office, mbaka hata kuingia kwa gate, Ule AP askari yako kwa gate. Eh, so unenda wapi? Eh, so itakuwa aje? I'm like, yo. When did we stop being satisfied with our salaries, man? You know, it's, it's annoying that you pay tax and you still pay another tax. Okay, you guys are okay. Mimi, it's annoying for me. You know? And I'm like, yo. When did we stop trusting God that he shall bless the work of my hands? And so I'll wait on him. I'll trust in him. Are you getting the drift? It is, for me, you know, Bible says that better the, the little that uh, an honest man has. You know? Um, I was watching, uh, I think I watched too many videos, but I watched an hour one of one of our, do you see how our political leaders roll? Like those guys have the latest cars. They have the, and it's not only Atta Cheska is the latest. And you know, we paint a picture in our heads that that's it. And we don't want to wait on God to build you up to that capacity. So by the time it comes, you have fun, but 
Ikitoka tu hivi, you don't know how to stand on your own two feet. You didn't wait on him. And so I truly believe that when you wait on God and he actually comes through, you get to enjoy the promises better. Imagine I trusted God for a car. God came through. I saved money. I bought the car. It feels good. I can, mini lizama, yo, when I buy a car, Pastor Rasta, sit away at it. I can't hide in the blessing of God. I have to testify. <laughs> yo, anyway, mutaona tu. Si muko hapa. Lamentations 3, 25 and 26 says, The Lord is good to those who wait for him. To the soul who seeks him, it is good that one should hope and wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Trust me, when he eventually comes through with your promise, you will enjoy it. You will have fun. Let me, put, let me just throw something in there. One of the things I enjoy is... Um, you know, uh, I, I enjoy, we, we usually take long walks with my wife in the morning. And we walk holding hands. And man, I waited. I trusted the process. I dated. I dated. I, I persevered. Oh, I persevered. I came to church. I was given a wife. Yo, why don't I get to enjoy it now? What if? <laughs> what if? You know, you know. You know. Juzi, Pastor Erastas had a birthday and Pastor Alice posted it on Facebook. Yo, I was taking notes. I was like, lines. You know, lakini kama weni mtuwa kujificha ficha. Yo, how is that a post? Na kudwengine yetu mpoa jayi kupost. You're dating someone who is not dating you. Chani siendele sana. You will, number three, you shall enjoy the fullness of the promise even as you wait. And then number four is you shall be preserved as you wait. You shall be preserved as you wait. Waiting on God will keep you in safety actually. You know, as you wait on him, I'm, God, I trust in you. I'll not move unless you tell me to move. I'll wait on you. Man, that thing will preserve your life. Because God will ensure until that promise comes to pass, no one will touch you. He's waiting on me. He stayed in me. In Luke chapter 2, verse 25 and 26, you know, uh, Mary and Joseph taken the baby Jesus to, you know, the temple. And the Bible says, and behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was just, was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that what? That he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Waiting on God will actually save your life. Literally, you know, uh, some moves God is like, don't go there now. And it can actually save your life. Why? Waiting on God preserves you. And so, as you wait, believe. Believe. Just like this man told God, God, I believe, help my unbelief. It's saying that God, you know what? I am weak. I don't know if I can do this thing, but help my belief. Believe. As you wait on God, do not doubt. Don't insult God with your doubt. Believe. He said it, he will do it. He said it, however long it takes, it will come to pass. If Sarah could have a child at that age, it will come to pass. Whatever he said, he will do. Remember this, that God exists outside of time. He is not limited by time. When we call him Alpha and Omega, Hana Mwanzo, Hana Mwisho. He can see everything in good perspective. Believe that if he said it, he will do it. Number two, be patient. The Bible says, be still and know 
that I am God. One of the troubles I usually have with one of my children is ukim promise kitu hatalala. Umwambie baba kesho utaenda sleepover hata kusumbua. Kesho imefika. Tenda tunatoka saa ngapi? Hey, so many times hata you know hata tumwambiagi kuna mtu anakuja kutembea. Kwa hiyo tutapumua kwa hiyo nyumba. Amefika, anakuja saa ngapi? Mpigie simu. Ara, yo, don't behave that way with God. Chill. He said he will do it. He will do it. Trust him. In fact, ukifika mwisho, just worship him. God, I worship you. Sina ingine ya kusema. I worship you. I mean, you know, having children really taught me how we behave with God as a father. Because I look at those guys and I'm like, yo, yo. Una, alishasema, nishasema nda kupatia. But you're always on my case. Tanapatia sanga api. And I'm like, yo, I told you I'll do it. I've not forgotten. Chill. How much more with God? He said he will do it. He will do it. Learn to be still and know that he is God. Three, as you're waiting, do what waiters do. What do they do? They serve. All right? And so as you wait, serve. Don't be idle. Waiting does not mean that you make a chini and you're just like, uh -uh, I'm not moving, I'm waiting. Serve. Keep serving God. Serve God even by faith. Tell people of the goodness of God, even if you think you have not seen it. Keep serving. Keep, you know, uh, doing what you're doing. Don't put things on hold. And number four, leave. Don't postpone your joy, man. Don't postpone stuff. Until God comes through. Sitafanya, yo. Keep living. Keep serving. Keep enjoying, you know, life as God intended. And so, in conclusion, I submit to you that waiting is trusting in God. Waiting is trusting in God. Ecclesiastes 3.11 gives us the famous scripture that you, God, has made everything beautiful for its own time. And so, waiting is trusting that God will make everything beautiful in time. And so I submit to you in conclusion that waiting is trusting in God. I submit to you that waiting is submitting to God. Waiting is saying, I'll not take things in my own hands. You, God, do as you wish. I submit. Ukisamani leo, ukisamani kesho, mimi ni nani. I'll do what you want. Waiting is not only trusting in God, but it's also submitting to him. I have a friend of mine who sadly passed away this year. Well, it's, it was one of those very painful episodes for, for me. And he had been battling liver kidney failure for a while. And he even got a you know, transplant from the sister. But uh, one morning he just didn't wake up. And he was a pastor. He was a youth pastor and a really cool guy. And from the time he discovered he had kidney issues, he used to have one phrase that he kept saying. Every time I could preach, he used to say this phrase. And, you know, it kept ringing in my head. He used to say that, will you trust God's heart even when you don't know his mind? Will you still trust his heart that he loves me, he cares, he will intervene, even when you don't understand his mind? And so, it's like he's saying, will you still submit even when it doesn't make sense? Oh God, it's taken too long. But still, I bow. Still, I submit. I'll not do it in my own way. People around me are getting rich. My peers are making it. But for me, I'll follow the right way. I'll do things the right way. People around me are bribing to get contracts in their business. But as for me, I'll wait. I'm submitted totally to you and to your word, submitting to God. And so I, sub I, I conclude by telling you that waiting on God is not only trusting him, it is also submitting to him. And finally, waiting on God is loving him. When you wait, you're actually telling God, I love you so much that I'll wait on you. If you've been watching this uh, very useless soap operas, they always have the same theme. 
there is a Alejandro over here and there is who mwingine tumuite Maria <laughs> and Alejandro and Maria they are never together when the movie is starting and then they take us in circles for six months and then at the end Alejandro will always meet Maria it is like I've always loved you I've always waited for okay don't try that Marlin right now yo is <laughs> a movie you know um, but on but now they are always very patient because they love the other person. Imagine you're living with someone else, eh? but you're patiently waiting for your true love over here. I don't know about those. I think they are a waste of time. But here's the point. <laughs> the point is this, that every time we tell God, I'm waiting on you, you're actually expressing your love for him. And you're saying, oh, no, you know what, God, I'll not do things my own way. I love you too much. I'll wait for you. I'll stay here. True love waits, doesn't it? I'll wait on God. And so you are waiting on God is uh, trusting in him, submitting to him, and loving on him. And so if you're here tonight and you're in that space and you're like, God, I've been trusting you, I've been waiting on you, I've been believing in this thing, and yeah, keep waiting. So, so, don't give up now. Keep waiting. He will come through. And as I said when we were beginning, he has a way of wiping our tears that no one else can. May God help us. Let us pray. Or should I ask Pastor Erastus to come and pray for us?